These are some more basic plane exercises that are easy and fun to do. Um, this one's just about folding planes. And to do this, you want to be able to draw a plane very simply and, and well so that you can do something more advanced. The first one is to do the 90 degree fold up or down or whichever way you want to think about it. The trick to this is to make sure that you're drawing subtle triangles with a couple of verticals. Anything that goes back in space, remember, is a triangle. And um, that's how you're basically converting squares and rectangles into something that creates depth. This is a different approach where you're going to create a, um, a plane that folds a lot. So the overlap is going to be a little bit more abstract because what we're doing is we're overlapping the second plane under the first. And the trick to doing a lot of this stuff to be economical and to save a little bit of time is to draw from front to back, meaning that whatever is in front of you, you draw first, and then you draw kind of behind that. There are other approaches where you draw back to front, but that's something that you can do if you're having trouble and you can integrate later. The other concerns to keep in mind are to use all of your line weight exercises to help you create extra depth. And one thing you can do that you saw that movement there is I pulled that corner back from behind just to be sure that I knew where it was coming out. Um, sometimes if you have trouble with that, you can like draw the line lightly or half draw the line or kind of fake it and not even really draw the line just so you know where it is. Um, that saves you a little bit of time not having to draw it and saves a little bit of confusion in the end product when you kind of have the wireframe method in your head but don't actually use it. Again, what I'm doing here is bumping up line weight and heaviness and kind of keeping it varied around the whole object so that different parts of it get emphasized differently. This one's basically going to look like a box in one point perspective uh, looking down from the top and Really what I'm thinking about it as is two planes. And it's not really any different from a box visually because you're seeing two sides and you could potentially see two sides of a box this way and it would work out fine. Another one that's very similar to that is to do that, do the opposite direction. This would be like if you're drawing a full box, drawing the back and bottom and you're creating a, a fold that kind of comes up and towards you. And this one's really important when you get into doing perspective drawing. You're going to do this sort of thing a lot. And this one, you have a simple uh, rectangle that you want to sit in the background, and then you want that plane to feel like it's com coming forward and, and um, out towards you. So your heaviest line weight is going to be in, the, in what's going to be the front of this area. Again, I'm using two tones of pencil to do all this, and I recommend that you do this when you're starting out, and even do this when you're at an even more advanced stage, because that second, or, or the beginning tone, um, allows you to kind of explore, make mistakes, um, be kind of scratchy, be loose, and then you can come back with your darker material on top of it once you know exactly what you're doing and where everything is going. And there's tons of ways to do this, and I'll explain some uh, later when we talk about different materials and different approaches you can take with those materials. Um, but this, but here I'm just using Prismacolor pencils and um, using a light and a dark version. This case, um, complementary colors. So when you're folding a, a bunch of times, you just you just kind of want to keep in mind that you're really only working one plane at a time. You're not working the whole, it's not a whole object. So you can just sort of build off of that and have fun. When you do this, don't build these exact planes that I build. Of course, you know, try them out if you want, but go beyond that, figure out ones that you wanna draw and really push this and explore the amount of space you can create with basically one plane folded or two planes connected to each other at a sharp angle. There's gonna be more stuff you can do and um, more ways that you can overlap these. This is just a suggestion, and I'm going to go over some more variations on planes in future videos as well. 
So one of the things you'll notice that I've been kind of playing around with is the different ways that you can overlap these planes. So you'll notice that I have a couple of versions of planes that overlap a little bit differently. And one of the things that you want to do is figure out how overlapping planes can help you create extra depth. 